What's going on everyone? Today I've got the brand new Vanquish Products H10 Optic here on the bench. And this is a new platform. The H10 refers to the new chassis, like VS410, this is H10. And Optic refers to the new body style that comes on this as well. And the new body style also refers to the hard molded, hard body plastic panels throughout hood, roof, sides, these rear flags, the grill as well. Tons of depth and detail. Along with the new chassis and body, we also have new H10 hydro front axle and new H10 rear axle. These are a new axle that are wider and the front features a hydraulic ram style front steering system. Now here on the bench, I've got the Yokohama livery, but this also comes in a Sparco livery, which has a black cage and blue panels where this one has the gray cage and black panels. As I mentioned before, all of the body panels are hard molded plastic and so is the interior that is also included. The interior's got a dash steering wheel, two seats and a driver figure. All of that also hard molded ABS. The interior is black on both models regardless of the cage or body panel color. Now the hard molded plastic panels give you that nice realistic sound and feeling as you're driving through the rocks on them, but they are also double duty on the driver and passenger side. This cage uses a quick latch and pin system to access the body in here. So there's a body pin that's up on top of the dash area. And if you remove that body pin, then you can drop the pin through the side of the chassis here. And once you get that removed, then you can actually remove the entire door. And that is where your battery is held. So there's two Velcro straps on there and you insert the battery into this little door pod panel thing, and then you'll reinsert it back in. Super easy to do a battery change, super secure, and both sides feature the same thing. Out of the box, you'll find that the Velcro straps are only on one side, but you could use the other side if you wanted to relocate any of the electronics, or if you wanted to run some sort of dual battery setup, then you could grab a couple more Velcro straps and run a mirrored type setup without any other you know modifications that are needed. Reinstallation is super simple. Everything goes nice and easy, just slides in. It's probably the simplest way to get a battery in and out of a tube chassis like this. Now, back to the axles a little bit. The axles are being referred to as H10 axles and the front is the H10 Hydro. And that is because this has a simulated hydraulic style steering system on there. This is common in you know trail buggies and hardcore off-road rigs where they run a double-ended steering ram and that's what handles the steering in the real world well this doesn't use an actual hydraulic it still uses a standard one-tenth scale servo here on the back side of the axle along with the new steering setup the axles are restyled and they're wider. They're 0.6 inches wider than a normal F10 axle. They do share some parts with the F10s, like the gear set on the inside, as well as the third member on the back side. The rear axle, same type of deal. It is wider. It is styled just like the F10, but 0.6 inches wider as well, new rear axle shafts, but the same gear set and third member inside. Now the wheelbase on the Optic is 13 and a half inches long and that extended wheelbase allows for the servo to get placed behind the axle, but still clear the transmission without having to run any sort of specialized or shorty style electronics. Everything just fits in there nicely. The servo is mounted to the axle and like I said, sits back there behind it rather than on top, keeping things nice and hidden. And being that the servo is axle mounted, this buggy is four link both front and rear. This axle actually does not have a pan hard mount at all, so it's specifically made for this type of setup. To make the steering system operate, the drag link or the link that goes from the servo to the knuckle is behind the axle itself as well. The steering servo output points down, so you can see the servo horn down there. It's tucked way up behind the axle, so it's out of harm's way, but that link runs from the servo horn above the lower links and then to the back side of the new steering knuckles. So the 
passenger side steering knuckle has an arm on both the front and back side. And on the front side of that knuckle, that's where the new hydro system is all mounted up. So it goes through there, the ram section, that center portion there, the slider, it's a three piece design with a center shaft and then these outer portions that bolt on separately. The pivot balls that these little links are attached to are narrower to try and keep the look of this thing nice and slim through the center section there. The H10 axles have an integrated steering skid plate, very much like the full-size axles would have fabricated in to mount their rams as well. But this ram is actually mounted a little bit behind it with a couple of larger M3 screws. At first look, you would think that these clamps on the front are what mount it, but those are purely for scale details. It all gets sandwiched in between the BTA servo mount and the axle housing itself, so it's not going anywhere. If you wanted to dress up the front axle a little bit more, you could also replace the M2 screws that hold those detail clamps on with some scale hardware, as well as on top of the steering knuckles. There's six holes up there where you could add some 164 detail hardware like the Vanquish scale hardware to give it just a little bit of more full-size style. Both versions of the truck come with the Yokohama Geolander MTs. These are the same 4.75 inch red compound tires. They're a very capable tire in a number of terrains. And those tires are mounted to the Incision Riot beadlocks. These are the molded beadlock wheels and the beadlock hardware is on the back sides. Inside there, it uses an inner clamp ring that floats between the two halves. That's the same clamp ring that you'll find in a lot of the Vanquish wheels. They're specifically the 0.8 inch width version. So if you wanted to open up these stock wheels and add some extra weight, you could either add the brass or the centered metal weights in that 0.8 width to give yourself a little bit more front bias. At the center of the truck, you will find the VFD transmission, the transmission you found in many of the Vanquish trucks. Keeps the motor low and forward for good weight bias. It has six and a half percent overdrive out of the box and there's a ton of option parts in case you really wanna change things up. You can add a bunch more overdrive. You could also add dig and you could swap it out completely if you wanted to add something like the VFD twin where you would have the selectable overdrive and dig. Now the skid plate is the standard VFD skid plate that you've seen previously as well, but you will notice that the front upper links are mounted to the outside of the skid itself. And they're also using the offset lower pivot ball that was used previously on the SAE shocks at the lower side on the axle mounts of a lot of the trucks, including this one. Out of the box, this truck comes with the 90 millimeter SAE shocks. So you get a nice amount of flex out of it, super smooth, pretty standard fare. Which speaking of travel, up front you will see that there's some simulated bump stops or air bumps. These are something that's used often in the full size world. And these are you know made to come down and contact onto some scale pads that are on the axle there where like a full size truck would. But there's more to those than just the simulated style. There is no give to them, so they don't work as an actual you know, air bump or anything like that. But the purpose of them or the benefit of why they're there is that if you decided that you wanted to convert this truck to a CMS type setup and you swapped in a set of axles like the standard F10s that have a pan hard mount, then there's also a servo mount location inside of the chassis. So you put a chassis mounted servo on, you take off one of these bump stops and it's the same spacing as the pan hard mount that's used on the VS410. So it's an easy transition in case you do wanna to go to a three link with pan hard and CMS type setup in this buggy. There's a lot of accommodations like that built into this just for whatever type of setup that you could really want to make this truck into. You shouldn't have to work that hard to just make it your own in whatever way that means. Now also, if you wanted to use that servo mounting location on the chassis up here for like a winch mount, you could also do that. It's easily accessed up there. There's some extra fastener locations behind the grill in case you wanna put some sort of fair lead or winch line guide back there. The grill itself also has a couple of extra mounting holes in there in case you wanna add some sort of light setup down the road. Now this will not accept the standard like Q series type lights or the Incision series one or two that's been released previously because the tube chassis and all of that that sits right behind it makes things a little bit tighter. In the full size world, oftentimes with buggies like that, they just run a pod style light in the light bezel. So, they're there for whatever you come up with down the road. 
In the rear of the buggy behind the transmission, there's another tray area that sits right back there. In stock form, the 1060 ESC is sitting on top of it, but inside of that area, it sits on a little section that can be clipped out and you can remove it from that area. And the benefit of that is that it's made to hold three additional servos. Again, for whatever accessories you could be looking for. If you wanted to swap in a VFD twin, then you would need two more servos, one for the dig and one for the selectable overdrive. And that tray will accommodate that. There's a third mounting position in case maybe you want to run some sort of rear winch or there's another accessory that becomes you know available or thought of that is back there there was room and now you have the ability also that tray that gets clipped out it can be rotated 90 degrees and bolted back onto that stock area in case you need to use it again for an actual esc tray area Directly in front of that servo tray slash electronics tray area, there's another smaller tray area, and that is where the receiver for the stock radio is mounted currently as well. As far as the electronics go, they're the same electronics package that's been used in the other Vanquish RTRs. It's got a four channel digital radio, multi-model memory in case you want to expand and add receivers later. It's a Hobbywing 1060 ESC. The servo is a standard 200 ounce inch metal gear servo. I showed you the battery compartment and how to get into it. As far as battery sizes, personally, I've been running the Gen Zace 3600 milliamp adventure packs, just a nice, easily available, well-performing battery, but I'm sure that you'll find tons of other battery options available as well. If you're interested in this one specifically, I'll put a link to it so you can see exactly what I'm using. It does use an XT60 plug, which is what this truck comes with in stock form. Inside the box, you'll also find a bag with the owner's manual for your optic, and you'll find the batteries for the radio, as well as a sticker sheet. This little sticker sheet has just got some Vanquish logos and some numbers here. Those are meant to go on these rear flags here. Common thing that you'll see on lots of buggies, and you can add your own number style or just drop a Vanquish logo on there in case that's all you're after. Or you could also remove them if it's not the style you're going for either. In the package with the batteries, you'll also find a small bag of some spare parts in there. In there, you will find the shifters, which you can replace the cap for the VFD on the interior here with the shifter cap so that you can add some more scale detail. Now, that's about all of the specs and details I can spit out about this thing before getting into my actual feelings about it. But this type of truck has long been my favorite type of RC. Since the 2-2 two -two days, caged buggies like this have always just been something I really, really enjoy. I have metal versions of trucks that are similar, and those are the ones that I've always enjoyed the most. And with the additions of having things like hard body panels, I think that those are just bonuses to make this truck even cooler. The wheelbase itself is very similar to how I build a lot of my custom trucks that match this style as well. And the performance of this truck is fantastic as well. I've been driving one of these trucks already for a very long time, but this is just a nice, fresh, clean unit that today we are going to take out onto the rocks to one of my favorite spots that has just recently become clear of snow. So I'm gonna give you guys the best depiction of what this truck is going to be like as soon as you pull it out of the box. Hopefully you guys are enjoying seeing the new H10 Optic. If you are already, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. From here, we're going to be taking this thing up to the Silver Lake area here in Northern California, hitting the rocks, having a great time. So stick around for that running footage. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more of the behind the scenes of this and the channel itself, you can join the channel membership, which is linked below, or you can hit the join button next to the channel name below this video. But with that, let's go up to the mountains, have some fun with the new truck. Ah! 